So what is this revolutionary new power of now approach to healing bipolar disorder? Just be. Be with the people that are in psychosis and truly connect with them. Dr. Lauren Mosher knew what I was talking about back in the 70s when he based the whole approach at Soteria House, a place for healing people with acute schizophrenia, on the idea of being with the person in crisis as opposed to doing something to them. Mosher writes, Soteria saw the person in psychosis as someone to be with, tolerated, interacted with, indeed appreciated. Dr. John Weir Perry, at his project Diabasis, which he talks about in his book, Trials of a Visionary Mind, took a very similar approach with the extra added step of not only being with the person in psychosis, but encouraging them to deeply engage what they are encountering in their mystical experiences. Perry writes, the intention of such therapy is to honor what the other person experiences with a readiness to receive her whole being, to relate to all that is in her, and thus to share in her psychic life and be in it with her during this critical period of growth. Now let's compare that approach to that of the late and not so great Sigmund Freud. From Peter Kramer's book, Freud, Inventor of the Modern Mind, Freud is quoted as saying, I cannot advise my colleagues too urgently to model themselves during psychoanalytic treatment on the surgeon who puts aside all feelings, even his human sympathy. Apparently, Freud's modern mind is far behind the times. The importance of being with people empathetically as opposed to doing something to them was found to be so critical that it was actually college undergraduates making on today's dollars about $10 an hour that were found to be actually more effective than trained and licensed psychiatrists or psychologists in helping people through the acute psychosis. Because they are unburdened by preconceived theories, non-professional staff members are free to be themselves and to be spontaneous with psychotic individuals. In contrast, highly trained mental health personnel often replace this freedom with cognitive, abstract, learned responses that can invalidate the patient's experience. So if you're looking to heal your bipolar disorder, it certainly seems that this guy will be a lot more effective than this guy in helping you heal. Now, to actually be able to just be in the present moment with somebody is a remarkably simple thing to do. And in truth, each of us have glimpses of living in the present moment every single day of our lives. We're just not aware of it. For example, any time we're in a really meaningful conversation that energizes us, we're in the present moment. We're just being in the present moment. Any time we find ourselves working on a project that initially we thought of as maybe a lot of work, but then we find that we're actually enjoying the process, that's being in the present moment. Whenever you spontaneously tell a joke that just makes everybody crack up, that's being in the present moment. I know I'm in the present moment whenever I visit a new city and start to explore it for the first time. But in truth, any activity in your life can be one in which you are in the present moment. And the easiest way to tell if you're in the present moment is to look at your watch. So far, this video has been about three and a half minutes. Now for you, has it been a fast three and a half minutes or a slow three and a half minutes? If the time seemed to go by quickly or you didn't notice the time passing at all, you're in the present moment. But if you're looking at that little clock in the lower right-hand corner and you're wondering how much longer I'm going to be and you're thinking about where you've got to be next, you are not in the present moment. In fact, where you are, or where your attention is, I should say, is either in the future or in the past, usually worrying about the future and often because of what happened in the past. Now, there is one person that is always in the present moment, and that is the person who's in an acute psychosis. For the person in psychosis, they seem to be living in an eternal now. They have no sense of time whatsoever. And as a support person, if you're not being with the person in psychosis in that present moment, they can really feel it because to them it feels like a coldness or a hostility that you're emitting. And they will often react to you in a very negative or even violent way. Conversely, when you are being with them, simply being, that is a state of love. And they can feel that love and will respond to it in a very positive way. Now, while just being sounds simple, it's not always so easy when put into practice for most people. I mean, as a supporter, would you be able to simply be in the present moment as you watch the person in psychosis piss all over your Persian rug? Would you be able to stay in the present moment watching someone who's your boyfriend or girlfriend put their arms around another support person and express genuine love and affection for that person and not you? Will you stay in the present moment when your friend takes all their clothes off and tries to jump out the window? 
Most people in these situations are simply going to hit the panic button, call an ambulance, call the police, get them over there, and just wipe their hands of it. That's why the ideal support person needs to be someone who's got an extremely warm and empathetic heart, and yet can stay as cool as a cucumber when the shit hits the fan. Now, up until now, I've talked about this level 7 power of now level as being a new awakening of consciousness, and in a sense it is for the culture, but that awareness has been with us for thousands of years. Various shaman, mystics, yogis, and monks from around the world have been aware of the importance of being rather than doing for anyone that wants to have a lasting sense of inner peace. The Japanese practice of Zen Buddhism is completely focused on the exercise of pushing yourself into the here and now. In the Chinese scripture, the Tao Te Ching, to simply be was to be the equivalent of being one with God, or as they called it, one with the Tao. The Tao pours everything into life. It is a cornucopia that never runs dry. It is the deep source of everything. It is nothing and yet in everything. Thirty years ago, the importance of this highly spiritual approach to living was not lost on John Weir Perry. In the field of therapy of all kinds, we have a good deal to learn from Taoism. This doctrine's mode of being in the world is a way of action that does not force effects but allows them. Now many people have theorized about why this approach to healing psychosis has not caught on as it should have, being much more effective than leaving people medicated for their entire lives. And in my opinion, most of the voices in the anti-psychiatry movement have pointed to the money and influence of Big Pharma as being the reason why this type of approach hasn't spread. However, it's my opinion that being primarily a modern culture, we simply haven't reached the level of consciousness yet where we can do the kind of work that's needed on a widespread basis. Ten years ago, the book Spiral Dynamics estimated that there was only about 1 or 2 percent of people operating at the power of now level, level 7, with another 10 to 15 percent operating at the postmodern level. Everyone else was functioning at the modern level or lower. So in other words, even today in 2008, for the vast majority of people, the very idea of simply being with somebody in an acute psychosis as opposed to doing something to them will be completely absurd and unacceptable. Or as Sigmund Freud said, If one wanted to make a living from the treatment of nervous ailments, one had to do something for them. So while the bad news is that many people have suffered at the hands of psychiatry for the last hundred years totally misunderstood, the good news is that things are changing, and they are changing very quickly. At the beginning of the 20th century, I think it's very safe to say that probably 90% of the world's population was at the traditional level of consciousness and lower. It's only in the last hundred years that we've had the modern, the postmodern, and the power of now level all become part of our society. So, as more people are evolving into the postmodern and power of now levels of consciousness, we're going to have more people that are able to understand what needs to happen and are capable of doing it. Or let me correct that, are capable of doing nothing, just being. For those of you out there who are still struggling with this idea of just being, I highly recommend Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now. It's really addressed to people that are having specific concerns with this idea and are trying to apply it through their own life. And if you're interested in how I came to adopt this philosophy, you could pick up my book, A Quiet Mind, A Mystic Journey Out of Insanity, which coincidentally started with my psychosis. For additional information on any of the books I mentioned in my videos, you can check out my Bipolar or Waking Up blog where I have a book list on the right hand side.